All right, gonna do a quick video debunking the non-dispensational heresies of Pastor Bruce Mejia regarding Hebrews 10.4. And non-dispensational heretics always have these little select few scriptures they like to twist and rip out of context and contort to prove their satanic heresy of non-dispensationalism. And non-dispensationalism is a satanic heresy. Very, very satanic. It's not just a minor doctrinal disagreement, it's a very satanic heresy. So here's a clip of him contorting Hebrews 10.4 and trying to make it say that, oh, it's, it's saying that Old Testament sacrifices were not part of your salvation. Typical non-dispensational heresies. Watch this. Hebrews 10.1 in the New Testament says, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Exactly. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. <clears throat> and here's the thing. They say, well, no, no, but it's, but it's, it's both. Verse 4, for it is not possible. Amen. Not possible. Amen. It's not going to happen. Amen. That's the Greek. <laughs> that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Not possible. Not going to happen. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. So the, here's the thing. Jesus Christ said, I do always those things that please him. Yeah. Right? But in burnt offerings and sacrifices, God has no pleasure in those things. So to say that they were saved by the sacrifices in the Old Testament, you're a fool, Gene Kim. Yeah. You're a fool to believe that. Right. Why is that? Because those are a shadow of things to come. Part of the root of this heresy is that Mejia believes that the Old Testament saints went to heaven when they died and not to Abraham's bosom. Okay? They, they deny Abraham's bosom. This new IFB cult, they think that Abraham's bosom was not a real place, which is a denial of Luke 16, 22 to 26, which describes Abraham's bosom. The animal sacrifices were needed to cover sins, okay? But they could never fully wash away your sins like the blood of Jesus Christ does. That's all that Hebrews 10.4 is saying. It's not saying that animal sacrifices were not part of your salvation. It's just saying they could never fully wash away your sins. Because animal sacrifices could never fully wash away sins, that is why the Old Testament saints couldn't go to heaven when they died. They went to Abraham's bosom. That simple. That's why in Matthew 27, there's a resurrection of Old Testament saints. After the crucifixion, Jesus went down to Abraham's bosom, gathered up the Old Testament saints, and took them up to heaven. Scripture clearly teaches that animal sacrifices acted as an atonement for sins. Leviticus 4, verses 20 to 26. And he shall do with, with the bullocks, as he did with the bullock for a sin offering, so shall he do with this, and the priest shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. And he shall carry forth the bullock without the camp, and burn him, as he has burned the first bullock. It is a sin offering for the congregation. When the ruler, when a ruler hath sinned, and done somewhat through ignorance, against any of the commandments of the Lord his God, concerning things which should not be done, and is guilty, or if his sin that he has sinned come to his knowledge, and he bring he shall bring his offering of a kid of the goats, sorry, a kid of the goats, a male without blemish. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the goat and kill it in, in the place where they kill the burnt offering to, before the Lord. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon, upon the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and shall pour out his blood at the bottom of the altar for a burnt, off, of burnt offering. And he shall burn all his fat upon the altar as the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as concerning his sin, and it shall be forgiven him. Um, Old Testament sacrifices were not part of your salvation. What do you do with this? It's not just symbolic or anything, as some of the non-dispensational heretics will say. It was a sin offering. Again, what does it say? It talks about the ruler has sinned. He, he's transgressed the commandments. What does he do? He puts his faith in Jesus Christ. No, he has to offer up an animal sacrifice for his sins. And it says that he has to do this. It's a sin offering. It's a sin offering and it's what forgives him of his sins. So animal sacrifices were indeed 
part of your salvation. They can never fully, they can cover your sins, but they cannot fully wash away your sins. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. But to say that animal sacrifices were not part of your salvation is heresy. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 31 to 36. And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat is taken away from the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet Savior unto the Lord, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And if he bring a lamb for a sin offering, he shall bring it a female without blemish. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of the sin offering to slay it for, slay it for a sin offering in the place where they, uh, where they kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall take the blood, take of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it upon the horns of the altar of burnt offering and shall pour out all the blood, out all the blood, out all the blood thereof at the bottom of the altar. And he shall take away all the fat thereof as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord, and the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he hath committed, and it shall be forgiven him. Animal sacrifices were not part of your salvation. Hebrews 10, 4 debunks that. What do you do with this? It was a sin offering. It was an atonement for him, and it was needed to forgive his sins. Animal sacrifices were not just symbolic, as some non-dispensational heretics claim. They were a requirement to have your sins covered. But not according to the non-dispensational heretics over the new IFB. They deny this. They're denying what Leviticus 4 says, and many other places too in Leviticus, and Numbers, and other places too. Animal sacrifices, they could not fully wash away your sins, but they were, they were needed to cover your sins. Again, if people were being saved by the blood of Jesus Christ back in the Old Testament, what was the point of him even coming and dying in the first place? If they're already being saved by that method, what was the point of him coming and dying? Wouldn't make any sense. Okay? The animal sacrifices were... An atonement for sins. They acted as an atonement, okay? But only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away all your sins. Again, Abraham's bosom. They went down to Abraham's bosom because the animal sacrifices could cover the sins, but it could not wash away their sins. That Then Jesus Christ came. He was that perfect sacrifice. He went down to Abraham's bosom and took him up to heaven because he was that perfect sacrifice. That's how it goes. But non-dispensational heretics over the new IFB can't see that. So don't be deceived by this non-dispensational heresy. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.